Welcome back to DIY My Way. This is a yard hydrant. I'm going to tell you what it is, why you might want one, and how to install it. I chose a Woodford frost-free yard hydrant purchased from Amazon for $104, but there are several makers to choose from. Since I live in the South, I got the model for a 24-inch frost line. This label marks the top of the ground, meaning it is to be buried from here down. This brass piece on the end is the valve. However, this brass elbow and PVC adapter are not included. The link to the yard hydrant and elbow are in the video description. Here's a look at the basic installation setup, borrowing one of Woodford's diagrams. The faucet head sits about 27 and inches above the ground, and the valve is buried just below the frost line, which varies depending on where you live and how cold it gets in the winter. Most yard hydrant makers have models for several different frost line depths, so be sure to choose the right model for your region's frost line depth. A yard hydrant works like this. When the handle is down, the hydrant is closed and there's no water in the riser pipe or head. The valve and plunger are below the frost line, which is surrounded by a bed of small stone or gravel, which serves as a French drain. Take a closer look. The plunger is pressed down and stops the water below the frost line, where it is safe from freezing. When the handle is raised up, the plunger is lifted, allowing water to flow while the plunger seals the drain hole. The water travels up the riser, through the head, and out the nozzle. When the handle is pushed back down, it pushes the plunger down to shut off the water and open the drain hole, allowing the water in the head and riser pipe to drain into the gravel bed. The empty hydrant is now safe from freezing. So the obvious advantage of a yard hydrant over just a regular faucet on a pipe sticking out of the ground is that it is freeze-proof and can be used year-round. Before I bury this thing in the ground, I want to check it out and make sure there are no leaks. Also, I'll be able to demonstrate how this thing works on the water and look for leaks before we actually try to work the valve. I'm using a washing machine hose to temporarily hook up the yard hydrant and I have a hose adapter on the bottom of the hydrant. If there are any issues with it I want to know before I bury it. So far so good. Give this thing a try. Here's a close-up of the water draining out. If you're connecting the hydrant to 3 quarter inch PVC pipe, you'll need an adapter like this one. And be sure to give it a generous wrapping of Teflon tape before screwing it securely into the elbow. As an extra precaution, I chose to wrap the valve and drain hole with a small piece of landscape fabric to keep dirt out of the drain hole but allow water out. A couple of tie wraps hold it in place. So as you may recall from when I was building my shop, the water line comes from behind the pool house and uh, under the walkway there, comes along here. And I have a tee off that, uh, that pops up to the ground here that we're gonna dig back down. That's basically serving as a marker. That's where I have to dig down to get to the pipe, which is about two feet deep from here. And then it goes on and meanders on around to the shop. So the first thing to do is cut off the water from behind the pool house. I use my handy PVC valve tool to turn the valve. Now onto the installation. This is a job for Big Orange and the backhoe. I position the backhoe so that I can dig back toward the pipe stub up.
Once I had gotten as close as I dared with the backhoe, I dug the rest with hand tools. I'm being very careful not to damage the water line at the bottom of the stub up. At last I find the water line. Then I use the backhoe to dig the hole deeper and a little wider before getting Big Orange out of the way. Time to check the hole depth. It's 24 inches at the stub up. and about 30 inches where the hydrant will be because of the slope of the land here. The Woodford Yard hydrant instructions suggest that you use a stake, a metal stob or a pipe, something like this, to drive into the ground first, and then you strap the yard hydrant to it to hold it upright as you connect it and before you bury it. Now I took those instructions as an invitation for a metal fab project, and I used a section of T-post that was left over that I cut a pointed end on, and then welded these little uh, flanges or standoffs actually to it so that the uh, yard hydrant can sit in here, be stood off from it a bit uh, and uh, allow me to get it hooked up. So you'll see how I do that next. Now is this necessary? Absolutely not. You could just use a metal pipe or something but again it was a chance to practice some welding and metal fab so I jumped at the chance. Now, so far, I haven't hit any rock while digging this. I hope my luck holds out. Before I put the metal stake in the ground, I'm going to do something else, which is put in some weed mat in the bottom, which again is not uh, exactly specified in the instructions, but it's something I do. Because what you need at the base of this thing is a small French drain to allow the uh, water to seep out of it and make sure you ha have a good percolation, if you will, so that at least that amount of water can exit the pipe. So this is actually cut larger than it needs, but I like to make it bigger than I think it needs. Uh, then I can trim off the excess. The landscape fabric will keep the surrounding soil from infiltrating the gravel bed over time, which would make it less effective. I drive the support post in, checking to make sure it is plumb as I go. Then I set the hydrant into the standoffs of the support pipe and put part of a brick under the elbow of the hydrant to give it a firm resting place. Then I use concrete wire to strap the hydrant to the support post at each of the standoffs. Now to add some gravel for the drain bed. This is some number 57 stone that I had left over from resurfacing my driveway, but most any small stone you might have will do, and it doesn't take a lot of stone to allow the riser pipe to drain. Before we lay out our pipe, first thing to do is to clean up where we're going to attach down here as best I can. With the stub up clean, I cut it off a couple of inches above the teeth and start dry fitting the other pieces of the pipe before I glue anything together.
Once the pieces are fitted, I glue it all up. All right, the clock starts ticking now for two hours. Now, why did I run it this way? You would think I could have just run it straight to it, but for one particular reason, I have no maneuvering room if I were to go straight. Plus, if I have a problem, specifically, if it turns out that that's not tight enough, if that's leaking right there, then I wouldn't have much of an option to move or do anything. But however, because I went over this way to come over, I can actually cut the pipe right there if that's not tight enough and have enough wiggle room to tighten that or reapply the tape and then put in a straight line coupler there and try again. If you didn't notice these marks on the pipe, let me point them out. They tell me how far to seat the pipe, so when I'm dry fitting, I make a mark with a Sharpie uh, to make sure that when I put the glue on that I seat it back to the same point. That line that's perpendicular to it uh, also helps me judge the angle. Like if I dry fitted something that's going at different angles and sweeps, I don't want to put unnecessary tension on them. So the little uh, marks there, as long as I keep them lined up, make sure that I don't have any tension on the pipe, that it's unintended. Here's a closer look at the installation. After two hours, I turned on the water and checked for leaks. Fortunately, there were none, so I can finish the gravel bed and fill the hole back in. After I get enough gravel on top of the landscape fabric, I tie wrap the fabric to the riser pipe and then fold over the rest of the fabric to cover the gravel. A little duct tape will hold the flaps down until I get dirt on top of it. Then I start carefully filling the hole and pack it by hand until I get the pipe covered with several inches of dirt. Finally, my backhoe and I tag team finishing filling and packing the hole. In case you're wondering how you might do maintenance on this thing since the valve is two feet below the ground, well, it so happens that these hydrants are designed so that if you unscrew the head, you can pull the plunger out and service. The, the only replaceable part is the plunger in the bottom, the only thing that has any wear, and the seal t on top around this little shaft here that goes up and down. So by removing the head here, you can buy a kit to replace the plunger and the seal up here, and you're good to go again. So if you need year-round freeze-proof water in your garden or your yard, then you should consider installing a yard hydrant. If you enjoy these videos, please help me keep them coming by clicking the like button, commenting below, and subscribing. Thanks for watching.